So let's go ahead and get started with basic OpenGL programming in C Sharp. So what I'd like to do is get into how to program OpenGL at a very basic level, or how to get started. Uh, so I'm going to be using C Sharp and the OpenTK wrapper library to get access to OpenGL functions and the OpenGL library. But from there, I'm hoping that we can translate most of what we do pretty easily to another language like C or C++, if that's what you happen to be using. We're just going to go into basics of how do we get OpenGL up and running. Uh, the whole getting something started, or, or how do I do this to begin with, uh, is usually the hardest part for me, just learning the very basics. And then from there, once I know the basics of how it works, the rest of it may take some time and effort, but it's not exactly like you know getting started or getting that first triangle on the screen when it comes to, to, to game programming. Uh, so hopefully uh, this will be a good tutorial for anybody who wants to know the basics of OpenGL. As far as that goes, I'm kind of learning myself, so we're kind of going along the same path here. Uh, so as I learn something, I'm going to put it on the video and we'll, we'll talk about how it works, or, or at least what I was able to learn about how it works. Okay, so I'm going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio to do the programming for C Sharp and uh, OpenTK. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to make this a console application. And let's go ahead and select the location here. And I'm going to call this the uh, basic OpenTK. Okay, this will be the basic OpenTK application. Um, this is going to be .NET 5 is the most current right now. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, here we are. We have our basic console application. And we can, from here, the, the world is completely open to us for whatever we want to do. So let's talk about how OpenTK works. The first thing I want to do is I, I want to get a window up on the screen. I want to be able to change the size. I want to be able to center the window, and I want to be able to clear the back buffer to a color. Okay, so that'll be the very first thing we do. Let's let's get a window up. Let's get the render loop going, and let's clear the back buffer. So first thing is I got to bring in OpenTK, or I got to bring in the OpenTK library into my project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on dependencies here. Right click on dependencies. I'm going to manage NuGet packages. We're going to browse. We're going to search for OpenTK. All right, that first one is the one we want. This is OpenTK um, 4.6.7. So let's click on that. We're going to install that into our project. OK, that looks good. All right, let's go ahead and close the NuGet Manager. I'm just going to open our dependencies here and take a look at the packages we have installed. And there you can see uh, we have OpenTK installed and ready to go. All right, so there's everything associated with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the default console right line information there. And then what we need to do to get a window up and running is we need to create a new game window. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to create a class that inherits from the game window. And let's go ahead and take a look what that looks like. Open, because OpenTK has a class called game window. Game window is the class that will get everything up and running for us. Okay, it'll have a render loop and it has functions that we can override that will give us access to the render loop. So let's go ahead and create a new class. I'm going to add a class. I'm going to call this the game class. This is where uh, everything is going to get started and where, the, uh, where we're going to get access to the main game loop. So I'm going to make this a public game class. And uh, I need to bring in, or I need to uh, bring in the OpenTK namespace. So we're going to bring in OpenTK. Uh, let's also bring in the uh, the windowing namespace. Okay, and this namespace here, the OpenTK windowing desktop namespace, is where we're going to get access to the game window. And I'm going to tell our game that we want to inherit from the game window. But, uh, so now, our game is a game window. Okay, so we can do what a game window would do. Let's go ahead and create the constructor. I'm going to make this empty for now. Uh, we need to call the base constructor. And the base constructor has two arguments. It has the game window settings and it has the native window settings. So right now, we can use those settings to, to define all kinds of things about the way we want our game to work. Okay, we can, we can define how fast do we want the render loop to happen, or how, how many times a, a second. Um, we can specify the position, and all those kinds of things. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the default uh, game window settings and native window settings. So let's go ahead and tell that we want to use the game window settings. So this is a class that I'm going to tell we want to use, or we want to make a default game window settings class. And then same thing for the native window settings. I'm going to use the default. 
And so that'll get a default window up and running on the screen. And then we want to get access to the uh, render loop. Now, technically, we've pretty much done everything we need to do right here to get a window up and, and running. So, you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to the program class. Here's where our application uh, starts up. Um, let's go ahead and create a new, a new game. So I'm going to wrap this in the using statement just so everything gets disposed of properly. Uh, let's create a new game. And then the game window actually has a function called uh, run. And so all we have to do is call the run function, and that should be it. As far as this is kind of the most basic game window you could possibly make in OpenTK, we can run that. And let's take a look at uh, what happens. OK, so the first thing that popped up was our console right there. We'll get rid of that later when we don't need it anymore. Uh, we can just change this to a Windows application instead of a console application. But here is the actual OpenTK window. It doesn't actually do anything right now, but the render loop is happening and uh, our game window is ready to go. All right, so let's close that out. We're gonna go back into our game. We can now get access to the render loop inside the OpenTK window or the game window um, by overriding some functions. Okay, so we're gonna override uh, the update function. Okay, so it's called uh, on update frame, and then we're going to override the render function, and I think it's called on render frame. Uh, that one there. Okay, and with these two functions, we we can now program the game loop itself. All of our updating is going to happen inside this function, and then all of our rendering is going to happen inside this function. So let's go ahead and clear the back buffer. Um, as you can see, the 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 background of the window was actually white. I'm going to change that so to whatever color we want here. Um, now, the first thing we want to do is um, we want to tell OpenGL that we want to clear the back buffer. Now, in order to do that, I need to bring in a certain namespace. And that's going to be OpenTK uh, Graphics. And then we want to use OpenGL. Now, through this namespace, we get access to a class. This is a static class called GL. And we're going to be typing GL a lot, so because GL is where we have access to pretty much all the functions that are available to us in OpenGL. Okay, and you can scroll through this, and you can see there's tons of functions available to us. Uh, this is basically where where we're going to do all of our work is using the GL class. So we're going to type GL. We're going to tell it we want to set the clear color, and here's where we set the color that we're going to change. That we're here's where we set the clear color for our back buffer. Okay, this won't actually clear it. We're just telling it this is the color we want to use when we do clear the back buffer. And OpenGL is like that in a lot of ways. It, it, it's very, I'm, I don't know exactly how to describe it. You have functions that will set things up, and then you have separate functions that will actually apply what you set up beforehand. And this clear color function is exactly like that. You, in OpenGL, you kind of set up, here's what I want it to look like. I'm doing all the setup code. And then later on, I go through and I have another function that will say, okay, now run or do everything that I set up before. So let's go ahead and set the clear color. And I'm going to set the clear color. We can use a color four. Um, okay, and you can see, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this Alice blue part. So color four is defined inside of the mathematics part of OpenTK. And it's basically a, a from what I can understand, it's a struct that has four floating point values in it, uh, one for red, one for green, one for blue, and then one for alpha. And I don't want to have to call OpenTK Mathematics every time I want to use something in this namespace. So let's go ahead and bring in the OpenTK Mathematics namespace to this, uh, to this file. You now we can get rid of this. And now um, color four has a bunch of different predefined colors we can use. If I click on it like this, now I, I could just make our own color. Um, in fact, uh, maybe I will. Let's go ahead and create a new color four. Um, I'm just going to make kind of a, a darkish gray green kind of color. So I'm going to make uh, the red is going to be 0.3. We'll do 0.4. And then blue will be 0.5. And then the alpha will just be one. Okay, so now that we set the clear color, now we have another GL function that will say, okay, now I actually want to do the clear. So let's go ahead and tell it we want to clear. And then here, there's different things we can clear. You can see the parameter takes something called a clear buffer mask. And when I click, when I bring up what we, the, the different types of clear buffer masks, um, it, it shows us the different things, the different kinds of things we could clear using this function. Now, the only thing we want to clear is the color buffer bit. Okay, because we're basically saying, I want to clear the color part. I want to clear the back buffer. 
um, and then we'll just end that like that. So, okay, so that's how you clear. And it doesn't really matter where I put this clear color part, where I set this. Um, I could just, in fact, I could put it in the update. Um, I could put it um, in the initialization function. But what happens is once I set this, this clear color function, that's the color that's going to be used here. Okay. And so, in fact, probably what I'll do is eventually just move this out of the render frame function. So it doesn't, since we're just clearing it the same thing every time, we don't need to reset the clear color function. It's going to be the same every time. So what we're going to do now is um, tell OpenGL that we want to take the back buffer and show it on the display. And we do that through the um, rendering context. So the game window has a class in it that's, um, that I can bring in called the context. And then we're going to tell it we want to swap buffers. We're basically telling it that we're double buffering and we're going to take the back buffer and bring it to the foreground so we can see it. Okay, So that should be everything we need to get that up and running. Let's go ahead and run it. And there we have. That's our game window. You can see the color that it is being cleared to. It's kind of a dark grayish blue green kind of color. All right. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to change the size of our window. I want the window to be um, bigger and I want it to be centered. Now the game window class fortunately comes with a nice function for this. So inside the constructor, I'm going to tell it that I want to center the window. And if I do this, it's just going to center the window at its current size. So you can see it drop down over here to the, uh, to the middle of the screen. And it has an overloaded function where I can provide a new size. So let's go ahead and tell it we want to create a new size. This is a vector 2i, and the i means integer. So this vector has integers instead of floating points. And let's go ahead and just set this up to kind of some random values, just some nice values for um, display purposes. I'm going to make it uh, 1280 by 768, and let's run that and see what happens. Okay, there we are. So that is our game window class. It's uh, been centered. We can clear the back buffer, and we can um, then show the contents of the back buffer.